Welcome to Power Up Podcast, the podcast that seeks to empower and dismantle, giving us the power and confidence to question, deconstruct, rebuild and expand in life. I'm your host, Amma Rouge, voiceover and multidisciplinary artist, well-being advocate, food and book geek with over 14 years of movement-centred experience. I am your host, Ella Mesmer, artist, choreographer, yogi and coach with a passion for alchemy, creativity, transformation and workplace wellness. We recognise that we can't dismantle and empower or be empowered without first learning ourselves, diving deeper to unlearn the harmful, restrictive and unprogressive. It's an ongoing practice and journey for us all, which is why we created this podcast. Our show features guests doing the work to enlighten, deconstruct and power up in their own magical ways. We're going to be having conversations around the power of healing, transformation, well-being and creativity and how they feed our personal and collective evolution, how they help us power up. Trigger warning. For anyone processing trauma, we always aim to engage thoughtfully and with compassion. We want to empower you to choose whether you listen to this episode or not, and let you know that in this episode, we are talking about being survivors. We're talking about abuse and exploitation and also trauma. If you are affected by anything discussed in this episode, we have provided links to organisations that you may find helpful in the show notes. To give a context of this episode, in the summer of 2020, many people spoke up about exploitation and abuse that they had experienced within the dance community. This happened both in the UK and abroad. And this conversation is really about our healing journeys since. Today we have a very special guest, Elsie, in the house. (laughs) Hey guys. Welcome, Elsie. Thank you for having me, guys. I really appreciate the um, outreach. Um, Thank you guys for reaching out to me. It's a pleasure. And Elsie is a very special woman. I met Elsie at Safe Spaces in Co, but actually, maybe we'll talk about this a little bit more later. I found um, Elsie online and, you know, was so inspired by what she was saying and and her her fearlessness of having her voice heard and speaking her truth that she actually triggered me to do my own journey of healing. So maybe we'll speak about that later. But Elsie is doing incredible things. In fact, so many things that I couldn't say them all. I decided that we would love Elsie to meet herself because there are that many things and we're going to be covering a lot of those today or as many as we can today. <laughs> but Elsie, you have so many strings to your bow. Would you like to introduce yeah. her and tell us a bit about what you do? Yeah, so again, thank you again um, for the introduction. And yeah, like it was great to meet you um, at last year. Um I really never expected to meet so many amazing people as a result of speaking out. And I never, do you know what I mean? So um, I'm just really grateful to um, have met you and again to be here. Um, So, yeah, so for me, I think my journey kind of starts as a creative. Um, I've been in the creative scene um, for a long time. Um, I started off as a dancer um from the age of 14 and I think that was my first kind of introduction to the creative industry in a sense um and I was dancing for a while up until I was about um 18 properly anyway um and then from dance um I went to India and I was there for five months and then in India I kind of like realized that I wanted to be a nurse um and that I had a passion for like caring for people and looking after people um, and so I started my journey towards becoming a nurse, which I've now been um, qualified for the last two years. And I'm currently working in ITU. And then, yeah, so but from coming back from India, I also um, kind of like pursued my art um, and was in a few like um, art exhibitions, had a little click. Um, and from art, kind of like met people in the music industry. So I think I'm very much like in the creative industry in the UK, it was in the UK, London, sorry, um, and have since done a lot, like a lot of community work, um, like workshops, festivals, um, 
which is currently what I'm doing now in another role. Um, so yeah, at present, I'm an illustrator, community engagement person, <laughs> um, a nurse. Um, and I also like do a lot of like other like creative adventures, um, mainly around illustration um, and, and community service. Um, uh, but yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Peace. So many skills, so inspiring. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot that I'm a student. Yeah, I'm doing my master's. <laughs> yes, you're a student. What are you studying right now, Elsie? Yes, I started my master's in um, September and I'm doing um, health and international development um, at LSE. Um, I'm really excited to be studying. Oh, yum. My friend um, and I, Layla, have a platform called Wild Within where we look at how we can explore wellness through ritual, movement, nourishment and rest. Um, and it's really focused on opening up these spaces of reconnection and expansion and transformation to all um, through those four pillars. So we were having a meeting about how we're moving that platform forward and Layla pulled out these amazing Adin Kra cards and said, oh, should we do a card reading? Let's pull some cards. And I was like, hold on a minute. Sorry, did you just pull out Adin Kra cards? So anyone that doesn't know what Adin Kra are, they are symbols. Um, in Ghana and each symbol has a meaning represents something um either a, a phrase um a meaning or a word Layla pulled out these adding crowd cards and I was like mm, hold on a minute absolutely losing my shit because I'm Ghanaian and I've never seen anything like this before it completely spoke to me because I was like this is my culture and tradition being archived in a resource which is really contemporary in a sense you know it's accessible to me right now um and I can connect with it and I was like who the hell made these where did you get these from fast forward a week later when I'm chatting with Ella about setting up our convo with Elsie and she's telling me about this amazing human that she met and she knows <laughs> and then I only look her up and realize that she bloody made that in crowd cards <laughs> can we discuss this serendipity yeah. magicness <laughs> So yeah, so um, the Adinkra cards were actually a commission. They started off as a commission um, by my best friend at the time. Um, and she was having a baby who I would be the godmother to. Um, and so she asked me to create these Adinkra cards that would obviously like, reflect her culture because she is of Ghanaian descent. Um, and so she asked me to yeah, like illustrate these flashcards that she could have around the house and stuff like that. Um, and I was there, like, drawing all the, like, so there's, like, 60 symbols in the pack. So I was there drawing all the symbols, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then once they had been finished, I said that, or we said that this would be a great opportunity to expand this, not only for our goddaughter, but also for everyone and for, for like, families all over the world. <laughs> um, and so we developed them into um, an actual series, um, which I would, like print off at uni like cut them myself laminate them each um like sell them as individual cards um up until 2000 and i believe 16 um so that was 2016 that like, we started that journey um and then around two years ago or last year um we just decided to make it more accessible and just like formalize the actual product love it um but yeah no it's been it's been a great journey so far i think for us and for myself, um, especially, um, I really believe in the power and the beauty of culture and tradition and our history, especially as an African descent woman. Um, and so for me, um, the cards are a way to reconnect to ancestral wisdom and ancestral history um, in a way that we can use every day in the present Um that's really important for me personally. My mum was the same. Like she used to like hand make us books, um, like detailing um, like African proverbs, Nigerian proverbs that I would then like grow up on, like, grow up on and read and stuff like that. So yeah, for me, the cards are really about um, how we can we connect to ancestral history and ancestral wisdom in ways that are relevant to us now. Mm. We're going to have a very special reading now from Elsie for March 2021. 
Yay. Um, so the way that I like to pick the cards is I like to pick um four. Um, and so I guess we can all pick a card. Okay. Um, since it's all of us together. <laughs> um, so I'll let Ella go first. So just tell me when to stop. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So the first card, um, this is the card that I kind of picked for February anyway. Um, so it's good that it's coming up now anyway. Um, so this card is Aya and it's um, Fern. Um, and the kind of qualities attached to it are endurance and resourcefulness. Um, and affirmation is, I am resourceful in all areas of my life. I use wisdom and skill to create enduring solutions. Oh, come on. Writing that down. Yeah. I am resourceful in all areas of my life. I use wisdom and skill to create enduring solutions. Love it. Yeah. 100% yes. Because that's what it is about, you know, resourcefulness is about not necessarily having everything, but it's about um, realising what you have, do you know what I mean? Even in the midst of lack um, and realising that you have the intuitive wisdom um, and and creativity to be able to make things happen. Um, it's just about believing in yourself and, and using what you have. And do you know what I mean? Like putting those things together. Um, 100%. For example, this this pandemic that we've been experiencing and that, always if we are resourceful we can we can always survive yeah to a great extent okay Emma I'll let you uh tell me when tell me when you want to pick stop um this one is Den Chem and it's the crocodile mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. it's about uh adaptability um, and affirmation says I am able to adapt my mind body emotions and expression to aid the evolution of my highest potential. Oh my God, come on. Yeah. I don't even have words. I feel like that's so spot on right now. Mm -hmm. So spot on. Speaking to me hugely. Yeah. It's that inner resourcefulness, you know, in, in a sense as well. Like seeing our right. minds and emotions and everything that is within, you know, um, as, as a resource that um, we also have control over. Because a lot of people think that... Um, we are controlled by, or we, I mean, we're heavily controlled by our mind and emotions. Whereas, um, there is an element of us having control over our mind and emotions. Um, yeah, and, yeah, that being a resource that we can really tap into. Like you're saying, you have a certain amount of input into how you can move through the world, and you don't have to just be rigid and take the force of things. Mm. But actually, you can adapt your being to continue to evolve. And it's just about your mindset, really, and how you choose which lens you choose to see yeah. things through. 100%. Um, I'll let you guys do the, continue to do the, the other ones. Um, uh, so Ella again, uh, tell me when to stop. Yeah. So this one is Fihankra and it's um, safety or house and compound and it's about security and safety. Um, mm. And the affirmation says, I am safe and I am secure. Nothing can harm me. I am protected. And the link to the card, if you want to buy your own pack or learn more or even see the images, is there in the show notes. Okay, we'll do one more. Um, I'm going to tell someone to stop. Stop. I'm R. So this one's Asase Yuduru. And it says the earth has weight. And it's about the divinity of Mother Earth. So gorgeous. Yeah, and it says, um, I am both an expression and guardian of Mother Earth. As I protect and care for her, I do so for myself. Um, yeah, don't we all need to remember that? Yeah. Remind ourselves that on the daily, really. 100%. Because I think that totally changes how you interact with the world around you, how you interact with other people, how you interact with nature, and obviously how you interact with yourself. That is daily. Hundreds, yeah, and it just reminds me again, like not only that the earth, but also like the world, this this um the social world, in the sense that, like as we like look out for each other and protect each other and kind of like um address the issues that affect us. Do you know what I mean? Um, we're doing that not only for ourselves but also for others. Do you know what I mean? It's that reciprocal um that reciprocal cycle of of care and also expression. Do you know what I mean? Because what you don't put in, you don't get out, and what you do put in, you get out. You know, so um. Yes, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 
And linking that to our social therapy and what you've done there of that, you know, that I hope that it's, there is some level of healing for you that's also happening as you're setting up this beautiful platform. Yeah. At the same time that it's, you know, that like even, even you speaking out, as I said, triggered a huge healing process for me and I'm sure for many others. So it'd be great to hear a bit about our social therapy and what, what that is. Yeah. So, um... Our social therapy is a platform that myself and a friend actually started last year, 2019. Um, Mm -hmm. We met up randomly um, somewhere um, and both had had a conversation about shared experiences that we had had um, within the industry um, of sexual exploitation or exploitation, abuse, um, mistreatment or have you have however you want to term it um uh based protection anyway in the industry um and decided that we wanted to create something they wanted to do something to kind of like um to challenge that or to, or to raise awareness about it june 25th um i think i had wanted to speak out um since the end of 2018 um when i kind of uh realized that it was wrong and realized that um there wasn't really an alternative path um yeah I, I really wanted to address it and I think every time the me too movement would come out or, res- or there'd be a resurgence I always wanted to like join in and like contribute my story um but I never had the confidence I never had the self-belief I never um felt free enough of my story you know um up until June 25th 2020 I think um Michaela Cole's um I May Destroy You had just come out. I hadn't watched it at this point, um, but I know there was a lot of conversation online about it, um, which again, like, prompted another resurgence of Me Too. Um, and again, like, Toyin Salau had just passed or had just been killed after being sexually assaulted. Girls in Nigeria were being killed um, after being sexually assaulted. There was just so much going on. And I think, again, in that whole period with, like, Black Lives Matter going on and COVID, there was just so much that was just calling upon me, calling upon us as a community to be active and to stand up for what is right and to stand against what is wrong and to denounce what is wrong. Do you know what I mean? There was just so, there was that energy last year. I don't know what it was. There was just so much of that last year. And so when that Me Too movement came back around, um, I felt like I was in a strong enough place. I felt like I'd healed enough. I felt confident enough, brave enough to be also able to contribute my story, you know, um, because I know what it's like to to be burdened by your story and to not feel like you can share, you know. And I felt like I had transcended that. So, um, so yeah, I shared my story and was completely not expecting um, the response that I got from the industry um, and just how many uh, people gravitated towards the um, towards the message. Um, and in the midst of that I realized that I didn't want this to be something that just was for me or that just centered on me or that just focused on me. And I really wanted to create something that um or offer something that could extend to serve everyone else that had gone through what I was speaking about, if that makes sense. Um and so I asked one of my mentors, like, how can I how can I like expand this beyond me? And she was like, create a space where people can share their stories or let other people's voices be heard. And so um with that I used the platform that my myself and my friend had created prior um to kind of be this host website or this host platform for um what is now called our social therapy um and the aim of it was just to first just create a space where people's voices can be heard and people's experiences can be heard because um as a survivor I think there's a lot of healing that comes from listening to the voices of others who have been through what you've been through certain nuances in your journey that um I think only those who have experienced what you've experienced will understand um Mm -hmm. the way we feel about ourselves and stuff like that however in hindsight um I definitely think that um I should have gone about that a different way um I think I should have probably created a private space for survivors to share you know um because the stories are triggering you know um and I think is triggering not only for survivors, but triggering for anyone who reads them and becomes angry and becomes enraged, you know? And I don't think anger 
um, is conducive to... Or, no, anger has its place in change, actually. I'm not going to denounce anger and people's rage because it is due, do you know what I mean? But I think... Um, Really, I should have created an environment that allowed for more conversation, that allowed for more um, more active problem solving and thinking and collaboration, um, as opposed to what was created, which was fear um, and uh, distrust and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I had to really reckon with that. Um, and which is why now um, our current platform is focusing on education, and so um, our current tagline is um, creating a, co- a culture of conversation, um, which is to heal and share and learn and safeguard through the sharing of our stories. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of where we're at now. So beautiful, so inspiring. And so if I was to go onto the site, what would the, what would the experience be for that user? Why, why are they, like, what do they do when they get there? Yeah, so um, it's still very much in the works. Um, I think there's a lot of safeguarding that comes with being a platform for people to share their stories specifically. Um, yeah. I think I got a, yeah, like a, a first-hand crash course introduction to, um, uh, like, the safeguarding issues around that. Um, and so I think we've moved towards a more educational space, um, mm-hmm. wanting to share what we, like, what we read and what we learn and, other stuff that's happening in 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 the culture. Um, however, we still understand that sharing your story and being heard, um, or even yeah, like being heard is really important. Um, and so we created mm. this reflection box where um, on our website where people can um, write their experiences um, related to any particular topic. So we have topics on um, yeah, like from from abuse to trauma to bereavement to um, anxiety. Um, where people could just share their stories um, completely anonymous me, anon- anonymously. Um, and there are some guided questions um, that people can can reflect on and answer. Um, but the aim is to also create like our own kind of like study. So if people are saying that this, maybe like when it comes to maybe like bereavement, people are saying that they are experiencing anxiety or there's, or more times than one people are saying the same thing, at least we can like begin to draw up um, our own form of like research, our own form of study that can again hopefully contribute to um, the 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 wider understanding about what people go through um, and stuff like that. Um, and apart from that, we have some resources on the website like books, the PDFs. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely want to like expand the website anyway, just so that there's more resources um, available for people to kind of like tap into. This is incredible. Yeah. It's it's such a beautiful space that you've created and so necessary. Thank you. And I think that the the hip hop scene in in the UK, but actually probably in the world, has kind of had a almost like a slower waking up to industries. You know, we saw we saw the um, the acting world kind of the Me Too movement happen much earlier, and that this really happened in in twenty twenty for for the hip hop community, both in the UK, in the US, and I'm sure around the world. Yeah, not only the hip hop scene as well, but also like um the ballet scene, jazz, contemporary worlds, they also got um addressed because I think it's it is a um a very wide issue that affects every single um scene and industry. Well, thank you for being you and you know, the work that you're doing is so important and I'm imagining it's also quite tiring and that you know, I'm interested in how you rest and how you empower yourself and how you for me like at the time um like june august no june july was it was horrible it was genuinely horrible in the sense that um it was a lot um i didn't consider how much it would take a toll on me um navigating that for myself but then also trying to hold space for other people um like I just went into go mode and I just could not turn off. Like I felt like I felt so responsible for everything that happened. And like I wasn't sleeping, I wasn't eating. Um, I was having to leave work early because of like panic attacks. Um, it was it was re- it was really bad, like the first few months. Um, but then for me, I'm I think I've got better at um reaching out to people. 
Um, and so I'm really grateful that I had like a community of friends that would like sit on the phone with me to help me sleep or let me come to their house and just sit on their floor. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just lie on their floor and roll around for a bit. Um, yeah. Um, and I think one of the main people that really um, helped me was um, a lady called Jocelyn. Um, Jocelyn uh, Newt- yeah, Newton, um, who runs the platform um, Our Naked Truths. Mm, um that platform's delicious it's lovely yeah. yeah um and I think I had spoken to her or she'd spoken to me anyway um and she offered I was telling her like I wasn't sleeping and I couldn't eat um and so she was like do you want to come stay at our, our house and I was like yes that same morning I r- packed my bags and I like literally like r- fled fled my house and went to go and stay with them um and they get like um it's her and my um my like, one of my best friends um yeah they fed me looked after me and because she's also a trained uh, mental health um advocate and um someone that works with people who have suffered like trauma and abuse and stuff like that she um helped me with a few exercises to help walk me through the journey of like me even speaking out and how many years had come before that and just kind of like really um taking strength with my journey if that makes sense and and everything Mm. related around that um and so after that I felt like way better like I was sleeping again eating normally as per um and then yeah I think I think I think the people that reached out to me and the people that um that would again like send me messages like on a random like one month later or two weeks later because it's like with, with stuff like that is like it's like ups and downs if that makes sense and you can be up for a little while but then you can be really down and so like getting around a message of someone being like oh well done or do I mean I'm proud of you like that like was literally like I want to say life-saving um Mm -hmm. I think that that period lasted for me for about three months um and I think um it's still ongoing in the sense that there's still like some fears about oh who can you see who 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 can who do I mean who is safe who isn't safe who's gonna screw face me who isn't do you know what I mean um yeah but I think for me I think the focus re re re, um refocusing on the purpose and on the passion and the real need for Mm -hmm. this work um is what kind of keeps me motivated and keeps me centered and keeps me passionate um and keeps me engaged um I think also that being said a lot has happened in the world and in the industry and in everything since then. And so I think a lot of people have had to also take time from this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm including myself, you know, um, just so that you can just be human. Um, I think um, last year uh, with all the different stuff that was going on, people were kind of like forced in a sense to be this activist or forced to be politically engaged or forced to be socially engaged. Um, Whereas, um, what we needed really was to just be human, if that makes sense. Um, not, not, not as like, either or, but um, I think there definitely needs to be more space for us to just exist as humans, you know. And I think people mm-hmm. are taking that time now to just exist and to just breathe into their their body and their space and their, you know. Yeah. And actually, maybe come back to like homeostasis, to that state of um, relaxed, because I think there's what you're saying. There's like an element of that when we're so busy being a support system sometimes we can forget to look after ourselves or we can kind of be in um, like be almost in in stress mode as you're as you're being a support system and so we need it's almost like um the waves of the sea isn't it like they come in and they come out and maybe you have your time to be activist and to be really active and and fighting for the cause and then maybe you have your time to just refill up your cup come mm-hmm. back onto yourself and then you can kind of give it, it, it kind of connects back to the giving and receiving doesn't mm-hmm. it as well like out and then coming back and receiving things for you and then yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. it's important um you know because I think um even in these spaces of like um activism there there isn't a lot of conversation around like um activists mental health I feel like I feel like um people not that I'm calling myself an activist because I'm I don't think I'm an activist I think I'm just passionate about stuff but I think um people that are those support systems there isn't really that much um conversation around their mental health if that makes sense um, yeah. and their well-being um, which is important you know um it's very important yeah especially when we talk about like um 
people that are leaders, people at the top or people that are, are doing active work, people always just assume they're going to be strong or assume they have their, their, their shit figured out. Um, and it's not true, you know, um, Absolutely. Um, even I think I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of like wellness coaches and life coaches like develop and come out, um, kind of like promote themselves as of recent as well. And I think even these people, I love how, um, transparent they are about even though they're a wellness coach they are also human and they also go through periods of wanting to cry for like two weeks and yeah do you know what I mean and, and that's okay you know um so yeah just more transparency is kind of what I'm advocating for personally just more openness honesty and transparency yeah absolutely as much as we can heal and we can transmute we also have our challenges and we have our struggles and we like to be able to identify with each other at human level and I really feel like that is happening more and more and more and there's less taboo around it. I think that's a really good point you made, Amma, about, you know, for example, I'm a coach and I have a coach. And Elsie, you spoke about your mentor. It'd be really interesting to hear a bit about that experience because I, I do think it's so important that, you know, that that line by Lauren Hill, I just love it, how are you going to win if you ain't right within, you know, that we have to be doing that work. Um, to be able to offer and share so it'd be great to hear a bit about your mentor um yeah I think when I use the term mentor I do use it very loosely in the sense that there have been key people right from the beginning of my creative journey who I would call mentors or peer mentors and they probably wouldn't even know um like back when I started off like dancing in trilogy like people like um Sophia Sinclair these are people who maybe now would be considered my peers but at the time I was like you guys are so cool you're my mentors um and you know like right up until the present day you know there have been so many people that have played a key part in my life and who I have taken as mentors just because of their kindness or just because of their wisdom perceived wisdom just because of how supportive they've been you know and I think again it just really showcases how important it is for us as the old generation or for us as leaders or for us as anyone, you know, that's trying to be um, active in other people's lives and community work, in youth work, et cetera, et cetera. It's important for us to really understand the position and the power that we hold. Because I think many times it can be easy to underestimate our power and underestimate how much influence we actually have on somebody else's life when, you know, um, I used to hang on the word of of the people that I respected, you know, because they were awesome, you know? Um, And so, yeah, like, when it came to speaking out, again, I had no idea what to do, do you know what I mean? I'd left the industry for a few years, um, and this was a massive topic, so there are so many names that I could could, um, share of people that really um, encouraged me, really supported me, really took time to empathise and and share their stories of their own experiences, you know? Um, Shout out Yami, who, you know, is just a massive force. Shout out Ella, shout out um, all the Azwa um, Artist Safeguard and Wellbeing team. Shout out Safe Spaces and Co. Shout out Sean, shout out Dwayne. Um, bruv, there's so many people. Uh, shout out um, Wild G. Um, so many people, like, who really stood up and really use their platforms, use their voice to stand for what they believe to be right. And again, like, I'm so grateful um, to those people. I'm so grateful to everyone that stood up. Um, Because for me, it's just, it's about addressing reality. You know, we can't move forward if we don't address the real, if we don't address the reality of, of the world, of the situation, you know, it's very easy for us to put on this smoke screen and go on like nothing's happening, but that isn't real leadership, you know, that isn't real, um, that's not real progress, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm just grateful. Um, and for me, like, for, the, for their ability to stand up is what makes them mentors to me. It's what makes me look at them and say, yeah, you're cool, you're awesome. Do you know what I mean? Like, again, like, I think, this whole concept of peer mentors, I think all of us have the capacity to be peer mentors and it's important for us to recognise, each of us to recognise the power that we hold um, in in various spaces, you know. Um, Again, like, I never expected the response that I got from speaking out. 
Um, and yeah, while I'm grateful, I'm just grateful that there was some benefit for some people. Um, I'm also sharply aware aware of all the the pain, um, the the mistrust, um, and just you know the the trauma that it brought up for a lot of people. Um, and that's something that I never intended in the way that it happened, you know? Um, and so it's just holding ourselves accountable. Like there was so much that I took accountability for or had to take accountability for. Um, and it was hard, you know, it was really hard coming to face with all the negative that came with speaking out. And I think that is a deterrent or that is the deterrent that stops people from speaking out, you know, the damage that it causes. Um, and so, yeah, I, fam, I had to go back to therapy. Even though it seemed like a really massively brave thing to do and, ah, oh, courage, oh, warrior, la, la, la. Like, the toll that it took on my mental health and my well-being was, like, despairing, genuinely. So, like... In, I think after like a few weeks maybe like I enrolled myself into therapy straight away like I think from previous years and from previous experience I already know what it's like to feel like you're losing yourself and I think that's such an important thing for people to recognize and realize like okay right now I'm losing myself and if I don't put in a crisis plan if I don't put in a recovery plan I am going to lose it and so for me, like, um, going to therapy was so, so, so necessary, so beneficial, so helpful um, in terms of re-restoring my confidence, restoring my purpose, restoring, remembering um, my purpose and my passion um, and reminding myself of the journey that it took to get to the point of even speaking out in the first place, you know, and the fact that speaking out is not a bad thing, regardless of what society tells us, you know, standing up for what is right is not a bad thing. Again, like, I never expected the response that I got from speaking out. Um, and, yeah, while I'm grateful, I'm just grateful that there was some benefit for some people. Um, I'm also sharply aware, aware of all the the pain, um, the, the mistrust, um, and just, you know, the, the trauma that it brought up for a lot of people. Um, and that's something that I never intended in the way that it happened, you know? Um, and so it's just holding ourselves accountable. Like there was so much that I took accountability for or had to take accountability for. Um, and it was hard, you know, it was really hard coming to face with all the negative that came with speaking out. And I think that is a deterrent or that is the deterrent that stops people from speaking out, you know, the damage that it causes. Um, and so, yeah, I, fam, I had to go back to therapy. Um, and I really hope that everyone affected by this conversation on both ends, you know, both people who um, are victims of the situation and those who have been accused of perpetrators, you know, I think therapy is key, you know. Um, so I think these situations arise when we lose ourselves, Um either from historical situations or recent situations, you know, I think a lot of things that are bad in the world happen when people lose themselves. Um, and so, yeah, I just... Therapy, guys. Therapy is great. <laughs> wow. Wise words, Elsie. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm really glad that you were able to access therapy and the wisdom in that therapy is key for everyone, for both sides, for the perpetrator as well as the survivor. I think what you said about a lot of bad happens when people lose themselves and how when we lose ourselves, we lose the ability to feel into and have that intuition about what is right and how our actions might be affecting other people and might not be in line with our true, you know, our heart. So, um, yeah, just so glad. Um, it sounds like you've been on really an, a long journey and it's great to to see you thriving and also offering such so many gifts to others. 
So thank you and a couple more things. And, you know, just to say that we're so here for you and we really support you and what you're doing. And I think many listeners will also be wanting to reach out and just say, you know, thank you for you because you are actually transforming lives by speaking out and, you know, as scary as it might um, might have felt and might still feel, you, you've certainly changed my life. And I'm um, sure there's more people who are exactly the same that, you gave them courage and you gave them strength so thank you thank you to you guys too as well like again like I think mentors aren't only like top down it's also like horizontal so thank you Ella as well for um being so open and being willing to do you know what I mean um share your your own experiences in relation to the conversation um and be willing to like yeah like be 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 a beacon because I think there's so much power that comes when more people say like me too do you know what I mean people that you yeah. herald as yeah. being wrong or being this or being that when they say me too it's like raw like you don't know who inspires you and you don't know who's inspired by you so yeah when you are able to say that what you've been through I've been through too or do you know what I mean and here I am mm-hmm. past that here I am following that like it just allows people to come out of whatever shell they have created around themselves if that makes sense as a protective force yeah Definitely. And and just the power as well of being able to speak your truth, you know, that the throat chakra is is all about expression and communication and being able to speak all the sides of you, everything that's happened to you and not having to hide that inside mm-hmm. the body, but really free it and say it without attaching that that means something about ourselves, without those emotions like shame and guilt that actually this happened and it's not my fault, you know. Me too is such a powerful way of speaking out and speaking our truth and finding freedom in that and actually you know my story was from 11 years ago so it yeah it it really took its journey and I made first I made a piece of art about it you know I had my different kind of stages of the process and I spoke to actually Anna was the first person I spoke to and I spoke to some friends but then seeing you I had that power to actually I'm just going to say the words out loud and that safe space with safe spaces in co and I'm so grateful to all the people that you mentioned so, so many people thank you and most of all Elsie thank you for being here today and for sharing it on the world honestly you are so inspiring and also in in existing as yourself you're building a legacy and building something wider to hold others and and that is I think one of the most beautiful things and poignant things that we can do as humans whilst we exist in this space in this life so thank you so much no thank you guys thank you we're all here together (laughs) and and for the listener if any of this has affected you we have many information in the show notes down there um just check them out we've got all the contacts if you want to get in touch with elsie if you want to know about our social therapy or any of the different platforms that we've mentioned today down there in the show notes. I think I'd also like to shout out um, specifically um, the artist Safeguarding the Wellbeing Hub, um, which um, is a collective of like, I think maybe about 12 women in the industry um, um, who have come together to create um, a an official space um, where people in the industry can come and um, have their voices heard um, and be supported, um, not only from a therapeutic space, but also from legal, professional um, and, yeah, other, other, other perspectives as well. So um, I definitely recommend the platform um, and, and the team. Thank you for listening. You can connect to us and our guests by the links in each episode's show notes. Before you go, we invite you to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the goodness to come. And if you enjoyed today, perhaps tell a friend to tell a friend. We are always grateful for you, our listeners, for our fabulous guests, and to everyone who has contributed to and been a part of our journey here. Our music is by Tom O'Carter. Everything else is brought to you by us, the Power Up Power Team. I am Ella Mesmer. I am Amarouge. And And we we are Power Up Up Podcast. Podcast.